Bonjour à tous, très bonne journée, très bon après-midi. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for those who are on the other side of the pond. My name is Fatma Bernajeb. I am the executive secretary of the Farmers Pan African Organization, PAFO, which is the continental platform for farmer organizations in Africa. We represent tens of millions of of farmers and members of over 70 national organizations and who are members of the five uh, regional networks. As a reminder, so there was this little video you saw in English and French. There was uh, the video uh, showing all the uh, housekeeping information. And uh, it is always with very great pleasure that uh, we uh, host this meeting and uh, we would like to extend a very well wel welcome to all of you for this fourth session organized between PAFO and CODSP. Thank you to the over 1,300 uh, participants who registered to this session. Thank you to those who joined us. Uh, thank you very much to our technical and financial partners, the EU, the uh, ATP Secretariat, the UN organizations, bilateral cooperation. Um, these sessions started in November 2020. The topic was uh, increasing market opportunities thanks to added value products for the first session. Then we discussed uh, conquering local markets. That was the second session. And then we discussed the uh, uh, free exchange zone uh, for the third session. For those who would like to review the previous sessions, um, you can find them on PAFO's website or on Kuliaspi's website in replay. And uh, as a reminder, your comments and questions are strongly encouraged. As for the video, you, there is a QA. and a uh, where you can ask your questions. If you could also tell us whom you would like to uh, uh, ask a question, we would be glad to know that. And um, this session is recorded. It will be put online like the previous sessions on the APAFOS and Colesipes website. And um, this being said, I suggest, uh, yes, we move on to the this fourth innovation uh, series. And today we will be discussing uh, uh, sustainable food systems, the key role of SMEs and businesses. But uh, as an introduction, uh, please let me give the floor to Mrs. Morag Webb, who is in charge of scientific and political affairs at Korea City. Morag, you have the floor. On behalf of Colli ACP, we'd like to welcome everybody to this fourth session, um, which I think is really a very interesting session and you know one that really is becoming of increasing importance to all of us. Um, just brief introduction of, from Colli ACP. As you know, uh, we're a private sector association. We represent producers and exporters in Africa, Caribbean, Pacific countries, and also EU importers. And our primary focus is, is fruit and vegetables. So we do have some other activities in, in other sectors. As Colli ACP, we provide technical assistance to private sector op operators. This is particularly focused on uh, small scale growers and on micro, small and, and medium enterprises. But as many of you know, we also provide support to the enabling environment, in particular, the public sector authorities uh, that play a key role in supporting agri-food production and trade. Our activities are financed primarily with funding from the European Union and the Organization of Africa, Caribbean, Pacific States. But also we have some smaller programs um, and we manage smaller programs funded through the STDF, the World Trade Organization, French Development Agency, and, and also Belgian Cooperation. Um, some of you I know um, will have been with us a long time through, through our technical evolving technical assistance programs at CODCP. And from around 2000 to 2015, we focused primarily on helping growers and exporters 
meet the evolving food safety regulations and standards. This was a period when many countries, including the EU, they, they overhauled their food safety laws and global buyers alongside this, they introduced certification schemes such as Global Gap to evidence compliance. And in recent years, we've also seen um, increasingly strict plant health rules in the EU, but also in other major markets. So meeting these sanitary and phytosanitary regulations and standards, they remain the basic requirement to enter any market. But over these recent years, we've also seen how requirements have evolved, and in particular, um, the growing demands from buyers to also address social, environmental and business practices. Consumers all over the world now want to see evidence that the food they buy is produced responsibly. Uh, and many global food companies, retailers and processing companies, they now use sustainability standards to demonstrate that their suppliers are using good um, social and environmental practices. Almost all EU buyers now will want to have social certification, for example, and increasingly the same is true for environment. So along this shift that we've seen um, on the, on the market side, there's also been a major shift in the policy environment um, in line with the global um, sustainable development goals, and as well as some really important national and regional policy initiatives, such as now we're seeing in the EU, the European Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategies. So globally, we're all starting to recognize that unless we take action and we do something to change the way we buy, the way we live, the way we work, we're really starting to threaten the sustainability of the planet. So Cully CP technical assistance programs, of course, we've evolved in line with this new trading and this new policy environment and sustainability now cuts across and it orientates all our activities. We have three central elements um, that, that um, form the framework to our work, our activities. For example, the, we start with the Cully CP charter. This is a set of sustainability principles that all our members and our partners are expected to start sign up to. And we have a sustainability self-assessment system, and this covers production, environment, business, and social practices. And all operators and all MSMEs that benefit from Collier Seaport use this to evaluate and to monitor, and also to evidence their progress in adopting, adopting good sustainability practices. And of course, as many of you know, we have a compre comprehensive sustainability program that's tailored to the ACP horticultural sector. But in delivering this support, we make sure that we always maintain a business focus. Um, this is not just about looking at how to avoid bad practice and to cause um, harm in terms of environment or, or social uh, issues, but also we need to see how we can help operators take advantage of, of opportunities. So this means targeting support towards practices that can genuinely make operators really more efficient and more competitive. And so we focus on the practices where there's a real business case for operators to adopt them. For example, by being energy and water efficient, which will help to save money or better soil fertility, which cuts, cuts the cost of fertilizer and helps to increase yield. So in the short term, our support is designed really to help operators meet these evolving regulatory and market demands and, and to hold on to their clients very importantly, and potentially to enter new markets. But over the longer term, Colip is very, Colip, we're very committed and we, we strongly believe that this new sustainability movement also offer, offers real opportunities to the ACP um, horticulture sector for both producers and, and MSMEs. By improving their social and environmental and, and business practices, they genuinely can become more efficient, more profitable and, and more resilient. And so with this brief introduction to the, the way we frame our, our support and our activities within Colise CP, I'll, I'll hand back to, to Fatima for what I think will be a really interesting discussion this afternoon. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Morak. Uh, voilà, donc, um, vous, vous savez que les systèmes alimentaires... Uh, you probably know that uh, the food system encompasses all the... Uh, activities involved in production, transformation, commercialization, um, consumption of farming products, but also in line with the definition of uh, the uh, FAO, uh, we have people, institutions that uh, initiate or uh, stop uh, 
changes in the system, but also the social, political, economic, and technological system these activities take place. And a sustainable food system must ensure food safety and nutrition for all in such a way that the economic, social, and environmental basis um, to manage food safety and nutrition for the generations to come be not compromised. Africa, although it is the less safe uh, continent in terms of food, is rich in farming land, in fish resources, in uh, biocultural diversity, and these are essential assets for uh, food Donc, systems. la PAFO a voulu analyser uh, les systèmes alimentaires africains uh, et a lancé une étude sur le sujet pour, uh, pour partager le point de vue des organisations paysannes africaines sur des, des systèmes alimentaires durables africains. L'étude est en cours de validation donc, par, les, uh, par les organisations paysannes membres de la PAFO et sera disponible sur le site web donc, de, de la PAFO. Uh, aussi, la présidente de la PAFO et le secrétaire exécutif de, de la SACA qui est membre de la PAFO représentant l'Afrique australe, euh, ont un rôle, ils ont un rôle dans le processus du sommet des Nations Unies sur le système, sur les systèmes alimentaires et partageront également leurs idées sur le sujet plus tard. Mais bon, je ne veux pas anticiper sur la modération de ma collègue et, et dans tous les cas, le partenariat de, de la PAFO et du collègue ACP met en exergue et valorise les connaissances et les bonnes pratiques des producteurs, des organisations paysannes, des petites et moyennes entreprises africaines. Toute possession d'innovation contribue à partager les réussites et contribue à des systèmes alimentaire durable uh, uh, dans une perspective entrepreneuriale africaine. Donc aujourd'hui, vous aurez un autre aperçu des entreprises dans diverses chaînes de valeur qui appliquent des pratiques durables. Et je vous laisse suivre ces, ces interventions grâce à la modération de ma collègue, Madame Isolina Boto, qui est responsable des réseaux et alliances du Collet ACP. Pour des autres sessions, moi je reviendrai plus tard pour récapituler vos questions et vos commentaires. Et juste un dernier point sur, sur la logique. Les biographies des intervenants se sont rappelées dans la partie chat. Voilà, à toi, Isolina. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Maureen. Merci beaucoup, Maureen. Welcome to all of you today, and thank you for joining. I see that there are many people coming coming in now. So we will have indeed a very interesting cases, four business cases today, which I liked indeed. Ari has mentioned already previously, people, planet, prosperity. Uh, we want to look at those cases and we do that as Padma said in all the sessions uh, that support organization of actors, uh, cooperatives, you know, inclusiveness, of course, which have an environmental uh, um, and circular economy uh, dimensioned and the prosperity uh, part, which is of course, uh, uh, increased economic benefits uh, for the whole stakeholders, but in particular, of course, a greater impact uh, on the small holders. So we will have companies from Nigeria, Rwanda, Madagascar, and Uganda in different value chains today. And from the discussions, we will have finance, research, and of course, the two uh, members of PAFO who have also, as it was said, a, a role in the UN food systems. And hopefully that could uh, get some of the key messages in the different uh, processes that they are involved now. We always have a, a woman, a gender, and youth, and innovation, of course, as a cross-cutting also to all uh, our activities. So without a major delay, uh, I think the interesting part uh, uh, comes now with the uh, uh, companies and the businesses who uh, uh, are doing well, despite, of course, many challenges and difficulties, and where we would like to bring uh, further support. So our first speaker, um, we will have them all and then we will open for questions, but as it was said, please already, you can, you can put them in the chat and, and some of the speakers can already uh, answer the bilateral or the ones that they can. So Naimeka uh, Itekwonu uh, is the executive director of Smallholders Foundation and Cold Arts in Nigeria. He's a farmer, a community radio agriculture presenter, and he has also a, a uh, found um, Cold Arts, which is a social business that designs, installs, and commissions 
person solar powered coal homes in farms, marketplaces, or next to the production site to retailers and wholesalers to store and preserve fresh fruits, vegetables, and other perishable food, and then contributing to increasing, extending the shelf life, and, and of course, reducing as well the food waste. Um, you will have the full, full bio data uh, in the chat, but you will see that he has received many awards as a young entrepreneur, and including the Africa Food Prize. So Naimeka, please, if you can share, uh, yes, with us some of the insights of your business companies and what will be the next steps for you and for some of us who could also support you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isolina, for that kind introduction and good to see you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, from wherever you are uh, viewing from, it's my pleasure to be part of this presentation. And over the next few minutes, I'll be sharing our experience uh, deploying code hubs, which are solar powered walking code rooms to reduce food spoilage, affecting smallholder farmers. But well, yes, as a brief reintroduction, re my name is Nnameki Kebuono. I'm a farmer, a radio presenter, a social entrepreneur. I founded my first venture, the Smallholders Foundation in 2003, and that venture uses radio to educate farmers and improve their skills and knowledge. And the flagship of that venture, the Smallholders Foundation Rural Radio, I founded in 2007, to, is a community radio station that does agricultural broadcasting. So I usually spend 30% of my time in the studio of the radio station talking about agriculture, and receiving uh, listeners' uh, calls and responses. Uh, but really what I find fashionable is actually spending 70% uh, of my time in the field, sitting down with uh, smallholder farmers uh, to discuss the challenges and opportunities within the agricultural space. And it was in the course of my travels all across the length and breadth of Nigeria that I discovered a problem, that Nigeria loses about 45% of food due to lack of cold storage at key points along the food supply chain. You know, and this problem affects an estimated 93 million smallholder farmers and other food supply chain actors in Nigeria who lose uh, about 25% of their annual income. This is a typical picture if you're on Nigerian highways. You know, you see uh, fruits dumped on the roadside because farmers uh, and wholesalers and retailers do not have any form of storage to actually extend the shelf life of these uh, food. But we all understand that refrigeration, which actually looks simple, can be used to extend the shelf life of food. Uh, but this infrastructure is not existing in any of Nigerian farms, in any of our horticultural produce aggregation centers, or even at our outdoor food market. Reason is because power grids are not capable of delivering reliable energy needed to sustain cold storage. You know, and the other reason is that most of the equipment is really expensive and out of the touch for an average smallholder farmer to actually afford. So in 2015, I founded Code Hubs as a company that actually designs, you know, builds, commissions, operates and maintains 100% solar powered working cold rooms. You know, these cold rooms are specially designed for installation in the farm cluster, in horticultural produce, aggregation centers, in outdoor food markets. Wherever you need to extend the shelf life of food, you can actually have a cold hub installed there. But the good thing about the cold hub infrastructure is that it actually demonstrates 100% green cooling. So we use refrigerants that has no ozone depletion or global warming potential. You know, this is a side using 100% solar energy, storing energy in batteries, and also calculating to make sure that our solar installation meets the weather conditions of the specific area for installation. So we can have 365 days cooling around the clock. But aside that technology, what we also do is to sit down with farmers to educate them about post service management, teaching them the best practices in harvesting fresh fruit and vegetables, and teaching them also the financial gain of having high quality food available for sale. You know, but our goal is to extend the shelf life of food from two days to 21 days, giving them an opportunity to sell whenever they are comfortable with the prices. 
We also look at, we also use the excess energy from each of these cold rooms to make ice blocks, you know. So in recent times, we have this small ice block maker that can make up to 60 ice block tucked on the side of each cold hub because each cold hub has excess energy and the excess energy is used to do up to 60 ice blocks in 12 hours. So our business model is simple. We are charging uh, 26 U US cents equivalent to store 120 kilogram plastic crate inside the cold room overnight. It is called cooling as a service or pay as you store. We also have cold rooms for the fish and meat sector. And each of these cold rooms can hold up to 150 crates of these uh, 20 kilogram plastic. That is three tons of food for a cold hub at the moment. So the ice block is also sold for uh, 250 naira per five kilogram worth of ice block. Our operations are driven by ladies. Each cold room actually creates a two jobs for women, a hub operator who oversees the loading of not loading of food and a market attendant who goes in to do a little bit of marketing and onboard new customers for us. Over the past four years, we've deployed 54 cold hubs. Last year, we saved 42,000 tons of food from spoilage. We've been able to sign up 5,250 5, farmers, retailers, and wholesalers as our users and increase their income from 60 US dollar to 120 US dollar every month. 66 new jobs created for women and more than 1 million kilograms of CO2 avoided due to our exclusive utilization of renewable energy in the form of solar panels to power all our systems. So right now we are at that point where we are expanding. Uh, we have 54 hubs and we are uh, building out 100 new cold rooms in Nigeria and 20 ice points, you know, and they are at different stages of uh, uh, conclusion. This work is being done by an incredible team of 68, you know, 14 management people and 54 ladies uh, led by myself, Bright, our chief of operations, Maxwell, who builds the cold rooms and maintains them, and Therese, who does finance and administration. But you know, we have a very strong board who actually supports the work. And that's, that board is led by CJ Ozoho, uh, commercial manager at Gas Aggregation Company of Nigeria, UK, and an advisory board led by David Rubin, who consults for uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. Together, we received wide range of support uh, from impact investors, uh, international development organizations, you know, uh, philanthropy, and several other support partners from around the world, you know. So in a nutshell, that is actually presenting code hubs and the work we do. And I'll be happy to answer any question you will have. Thank you very much for having me again. Thank you uh, very much for a very interesting presentation and actually uh, in the context of Nigeria, but of course, as we know, is one of the recurring problems in uh, uh, many uh, countries, uh, not only in Africa, but certainly uh, there. Uh, so without major delay, please start putting your uh, comments or your questions in the, in the chat. We will come back to that. Uh, we go now to Rwanda. Um, Pierre Damien Batezimana, who is the managing director of Shekina Enterprise, um, is the founder of the enterprise, which is a Rwandan pioneer company in the cassava industry, which manufactures dried and instant cassava leaf products for both local and export markets. Uh, I was very impressed to see, uh, you know, a process cassava uh, in, in uh, international markets and then creating, of course, e greater economic value and especially for group of women's disadvantaged uh, groups that he works with and he employs and gives employment uh, and opportunities. And uh, also contributes, of course, by using the waste uh, of cassava um, um, using it as an organic fertilizer. So I think there are many components that we can see contribute to a, a sustainability of the sector. So without major delay, please. Um, and Axel will uh, assist with the PowerPoint if you indicate to our next slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sorina. Uh, my name is Pierre Damien Batezimana. I'm the founder and managing director of Shekina Enterprise. Uh, I'm going to present you the case of Shekina Enterprise uh, in the food uh, <coughs> system. Uh, my company, Shekina Enterprise, uh, is a food processing company created in 2007 by me 
It is a, a medium size uh, enterprise located in Rwanda. Next. Uh, before talking about innovation, let me share with you uh, how I created my company. One day, I was watching television. There was a preacher who was trying to teach about potential. He was holding a small seed in his hand and he asked to some of the congregation to come in front and uh, look in his hand and tell him what he had. Everyone was just saying, it's just a seed. At the end of the time, he asked them to sit down and uh, write down a small sentence which changed my way of thinking. He asked them to write down, uh, to write it down, what you see is not only what there is. I am holding a forest in my hand, but no one could see it. He explained to them that if you take the seed, you plant it, you will get a tree. From the tree, you get more seed. And when you replant the seeds, you get more trees. And again, more seed. You will end up growing a forest. I, uh, that sentence changed my way of thinking. And I went uh, all the way from Rana to Nairobi to look for some of his books. Uh, uh, one book called Understanding Your Potential. Second, Releasing Your Potential and Maximizing Your Potential. After going through these books, I found that I have a talent of do it yourself. And one day I was uh, visiting a local market uh, in my village. I found some uh, uh, girls has brought, uh, have brought uh, cassava leaves on the market, but they didn't get uh, buyers. They were just throwing the cassava leaves in the garbage. And then I asked them, why are you throwing the, these cassava leaves? They told me it's useless. They cannot take uh, them home and uh, bring them again, uh, bring back them uh, at the market because it will be rotten. Immediately, the small sentence come again in my mind. What you see is not only what there is. Okay, so using my do it, in my do it yourself, I'm going to see how I can design a product from this cassava leaf because I understood that, that it was perishable because of water containing the fresh cassava leaves. I designed a small dryer, put the fresh cassava leaves. After some hours, I got the leaves dried. Then when I, I cooked the product, it was almost as the fresh one. So that is, that is how I started selling my product. What you see here, Akeza, is on basic cassava leaves. I put uh, my, pro my, my first uh, product on the market and immediately, I found that people are interested. Again, my second uh, innovation was to transform the, the, the Akeza product in an instant product, which is uh, a combined of all ingredients used to cook uh, cassava leaves together. And uh, just cooking of this product take five minutes instead of uh, uh, three to four hours when, when cooking the fresh one. Next, please. Next slide. So in gross model, my innovation uh, was consisting in uh, developing the fruits and vegetable drying technology and, uh, and uh, the the second was uh, to, aussi to 
to, to transform the fresh cassava leaves in, into a, a, a dried product. Les and the, the third one, the, produit, uh, the cassava leaves mix, which is an instant uh, for le mélange, uh, five minutes. Manioc, uh, yes. Prochaine Next diapo, si vous Other achievements. Alors, Uh, Shekina Enterprise is proud of uh, having established uh, a well-organized cassava leaf value chain where we are engaged with more than 200 farmers who are getting income from, who are generating a, a income from the, the farm. Uh, we are also proud of having uh, provided regular employment We are working with uh, around uh, 45 or 70 employees uh, at, your, at our factory. Uh, we are also proud of uh, having uh, empowered a group of women. We have uh, organized, uh, well organized a collection center where we put 2020, dans nos centres de collecte notamment, nous avons donné la possibilité à des femmes qui gèrent des activités qui sont très très importantes dans leur village. Nous sommes très très to EU markets, uh, UK, and the uh, regional market. As uh, I told you, we have a uh, uh, well, a well uh, organized business model, which can be replicated in even in other African country where cassava leaves are. Uh, Uh, taken as food. Next. Yes, uh, these are pictures of uh, uh, women farmers delivering the cassava leaves. And uh, on the right, uh, there are the, those girls who are managers of collection center. Next, please. So about challenges. Uh, we, yeah, we are in need of funding uh, to invest in researches for, the, for product development and uh, technology development. We, we want also to expand, but we don't have fund. Uh, about uh, waste management, at the collection center level, there is always every day, a hundred, uh, no, uh, one ton of waste, which can be used uh, to produce biogas in order to repress the firewood used the, uh, the factory uh, for heat uh, to the dryers. And uh, this waste also can be turned in, uh, there's an opportunity to, produce fertilizer. Next. Okay. I think this is uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, there are a number of questions already actually for you and uh, for uh, um, uh, Naimeka. Uh, that perhaps you can uh, take on board either bilaterally or just in the question answer session that we will have uh, later. And especially cassava will interest very much as well our audience because it's something you uh, find uh, widely in African countries and indeed very much uh, thrown away actually because it's quite perishable. Um, so without a major delay um, from Madagascar, alors, uh, Gaëtan, Gaëtan est en ce moment. Monsieur Gaëtan, bonjour. Merci de Gaëtan, hello. Thank you very much for being with us from Madagascar. You are an expert in the uh, organic sector. And uh, you are the vice chairman 
uh, uh, sorry, in Madagascar, of the uh, Madagascar Union, Sinavio, that you are representing today. And so what you deal obviously with the uh, organic uh, farming, but so many other uh, issues also. You are also one of the founding members uh, of uh, organic uh, institutions and farming institutions in Eastern Africa uh, and uh, in Madagascar. Uh, you uh, worked uh, on the uh, drafting uh, the legislation with regards to organic uh, farming in Madagascar. And uh, well, we we don't uh, we won't perhaps won't have the time to do so uh, today. But uh, uh, next time, perhaps, you will, in any case, present us uh, two cases of two different uh, productions, which are uh, part of Simbio, uh, and which deal with the, the, the local uh, aspect, right, the local farming and the uh, transforming uh, production for the added value uh, generation, let's say. Uh, so in any case, thank you very much for being with us uh, today. I think uh, Axel will be uh, managing your PowerPoint presentation, so displaying uh, the slides. Yes, thank you very much. Um, as it's been said, I am the chairman of the uh, Madagascar uh, Union in charge uh, of uh, organic farming. So I will be saying a few words about our union and then I will share a few examples of how uh, we uh, manage organic farming uh, in Madagascar. Can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, Monsieur Gaetan, est-ce que vous avez des soucis? Hey, Gaetan, it seems you are experiencing issues with your connection? You hear us? Yes? Okay. So the union was created in uh, 2011 on the an initiative of the farmers operators. Can you hear me? Yes, now. So yes, I was saying that our union was created in 2011, 10 years ago. So we have various objectives and uh, missions, which, well, um, today our objectives are to develop, uh, the, the, let's say, to, to, to be the, the main contact point of organic farmers in order to develop uh, organic farming. Next slide, please. It seems uh, Mr. Etosna's connection is uh, really bad. Mr. Etosna, we cannot hear you, Gaetan. We can't hear you. Perhaps you want to switch off your video. Yeah, so I was saying that on the African map, you can see four countries uh, that uh, manage their agricultural farming with uh, the government, right? And so you also have here a map of uh, Madagascar, which shows you where you can find organic farming. So it's roughly one third of uh, the country of the land. Next slide, please. Donc vous avez là 10 ans d'évolution en Madagascar. So you can see here roughly what happened in the last decade and the uh, evolution of uh, bio in Madagascar. And so we managed to increase by 450% uh, over a decade the, the land that is dedicated to organic farming, which is quite huge. Uh, we substantially increased the number of certified organic farms. In fact, 
2020, we see that we have uh, roughly 70,000 organic farmers producing shrimp, cocoa, palm oil, vanilla, and essential oil. We also have two organizations that uh, um, use organic cosmetics and 11 organizations that work on organic textiles with approximately $120 million in revenues. Next slide. Donc le bio au niveau national, uh, vous pouvez so, voir à gauche. Uh, uh, organic products, organic farming at the national level. You can see that uh, the government has dedicated a lot of its time and energy to develop organic farming. Next slide, please. So, it took us a few years uh, to really implement organic farming in Madagascar. So, you can see here from December 2017 up to now, the various steps and what the government and the various stakeholders uh, involved in this uh, evolution uh, have done. Next slide, please. So we are going to organize the country um, from the point of view of the land distribution, taking into account uh, the development of organic farming. So some lands will be dedicated to organic farming. And so we will try to, uh, let's say, uh, tackle uh, various areas in the country, namely close to uh, urban areas, uh, you know, the, the idea being to develop uh, the domestic market. Next slide, please. Mr. Gaetan, are you still with us? Okay, so perhaps we can move directly to the next slide. Next slide, please. So, what I would like to do now is uh, introduce you to two of our members. So, Chocolaterie Robert. Uh, Chocolaterie Robert represents uh, 11 different types of chocolate, 300 uh, farmers involved with them. Uh, they work in uh, different areas in Madagascar. They have various certifications. They do a lot of fair trade, and they are also uh, certified uh, organic uh, farmers. In the last six years, they've been uh, winning awards here and there. The chocolate uh, gold winner in 2020, namely 2019, 2018, and 2017 also. They insist a lot on the quality of their products. Next slide, please. So, as you can see, this is a chocolate factory which processes 1,000 tons of uh, chocolate per year. They have uh, nine shops in uh, Madagascar. They also have a shop in Paris. They have a coverage of five tons of chocolate per day. 30% of which is exported. 
côté de la pâtisserie, il faut un peu plus présenter que c'est une entreprise aujourd'hui, un, un savoir-faire malgache depuis maintenant plus de... And without even really uh, looking into the chocolate sweets, they do a lot of, uh, let's say, chocolate cakes, uh, chocolate cake products. Next slide, please. La coopérative Salal, c'est... The Salal Cooperative uh, was created 10 years ago. They started with a revenue of $200,000 uh, and they are now at $20 million. So this is a Madagascar success story. 80,000 members. Uh, and they're really proud of uh, their achievement. They really uh, moved from seed to uh, the final product, and they are fair trade. Uh, and uh, they are also, let's say, recognized as uh, gourmet, uh, gourmet product, uh, product uh, producers, if I may say. Nous avons perdu, Monsieur Gaëtan. Monsieur Gaëtan, it seems we have lost you again. Le, le, le slide suivant, s'il vous plaît. Next slide, please. Donc là, vous avez une chaîne de valeur. Right, so what you see here is what we call a transparent value chain, which uh, we are very proud about and what Shanala is very proud about and some of you also. They're really, really good in terms of uh, transparency and uh, digital traceability using the uh, blockchain approach uh, in everything they do. The idea is really to uh, raise awareness but not only uh, working on having a better impact on the environment and increasing revenue. So this whole system was designed around this uh, transparent value chain and they were awarded uh, the, sustainability, the sustainability leaders award in 2021 uh, for supply chain excellency and we are continuing to develop uh, our activities uh, together with uh, 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 and namely increasing the number of uh, members who work with them and many more producers are joining us uh, in our approach. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Gaetan. Well, unfortunately, the connection was rather poor, but uh, well, well, obviously, we have to take this into account. Um, but in any case, uh, what you presented us from uh, Madagascar is extremely interesting. Uh, we know that the organic farming is uh, very important there. It's very important for us also here in the, the EU. And these are uh, local models which are very, very interesting and so important uh, to encourage. Uh, and it is uh, such a good thing to be able to bring together uh, producers and farmers. I know the Robert, Ch the Chocolaterie Robert, so the, the chocolate factory. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm in Brussels, right? And not even in Paris, but I visited in Paris once. And it's really a, a great model, uh, very impressive. Uh, they work with the greatest uh, chefs in the world. Uh, and they stay a very, let's say, a local family, a, a, a family a business. So you have questions in the, in the, in the chat that you can uh, answer. Hello. Uh, Lovin Kobusingye, uh, the general manager of Kati Farms in Uganda. Uh, she's uh, young. I've known her even younger, and she's still very young. Um, businesswoman, very, very active, entrepreneur, uh, co-founder and CEO of uh, the Cathy Farms, and in an area which is not always very easy for women, which is uh, uh, fish, the fish sector. Uh, so not, uh, she works, really, she has very, very long-standing uh, relationships with uh, fish farmers, um, uh, that she monitors, she supports, she trains uh, uh, all over the years. She's working on fish processing and value addition. Uh, 
and she will show you some of her products. She's also advocating for women entrepreneurs and women-led entrepreneurship uh, across Africa, not only in her region. She's the president of the Eastern Africa Women and Youth in Fisheries and Aquaculture Network. Uh, fisheries is a very, very important as well value chain, uh, not only in economic terms, but on nutrition and food security. And you will see from the biodata, she's laureate of many prizes and recognition of her work uh, in finding innovative uh, solutions, especially also on the use of post-harvest losses in the fisheries sector in Africa. So thank you very much for being with us, Lovina. Uh, and um, Axel uh, will help you as well uh, with the PowerPoint. If you can make it in about eight minutes, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Madam Isorina. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody across the globe. I'm so happy to be here today. I am seeing so many faces that I'm familiar with, and uh, I greet you all. My name is Lovin. Of Sinjam from Uganda, and I'm the CEO of Kati Farms, as uh, my, Madame Isolina has already given a very good introduction. I'm here today to present about Kati Farms' work, and uh, our work is mainly to do work with youth, women, uh, and that this is through investment and innovation in sustainable food systems. And we are mainly specializing in the fisheries uh, value chain. Uh, here we do processing and trading. Next, please. Kati Farms is a company that was formed in 2012. I was the founder of Kati Farms, and uh, I currently have two more shareholders, one Ugandan and one investor from EU. Uh, Kati Farms is a national and regional fish uh, processing uh, company. We trade, we add value, uh, and we also work with farmers and we work with fishermen and women from the lakes, rivers uh, in Uganda and, and neighboring countries. Uh, and our flagship product is fish sausages, which were new on the market in Africa uh, and also new uh, in, and we had technical support from the Uganda Industrial Research Institute, which is a government funded incubation center. Uh, we started not very, uh, very with a lot of money. We, we started small and we have been growing throughout the ages. Uh, we also provide direct employment for women and youth in Uganda and other neighboring countries. Next, please. Uh, Kati Farms value chain is mainly to, to improve on fish consumption uh, for everybody. We mainly target uh, the, the low income, the poor, so we, and we provide fish to the low income earner through providing affordable packages, uh, which are affordable. For example, instead of me selling a kilo of whole fish, I can sell to you uh, a piece of sausage or sell to you a uh, powdered, uh, maybe not even a, a half, just a small uh, shark head of powder so that you are able to have uh, a, a nutritious meal. Uh, we work with almost uh, all players and we, we work with the government, we work with the, especially on policy matters, uh, we work with the retailers like restaurants, we work with the informal street roasters. Uh, who help us to distribute our products. We also work strongly with suppliers, and this includes farmers and uh, fishermen, uh, and we provide direct employment to 38 employees. Uh, we give credit to our farmers in case they lack feeds to be able to supply us products. Uh, and we also uh, do relationship uh, based on trust and uh, the time that we've been really working together with farmers has been long. Next, please. Uh, why did Kati Farms succeed in business? Uh, Kati Farms mainly, uh, the, the reason why behind our success is that we had innovative products. As I already mentioned, we, we, we base our, our, our business on research and, tech, uh, and development. 
uh, we, we make research, we, we get findings, and then we, we commercialize the products into uh, a business. Uh, and so we also make sure that our, our products are customized. We don't just produce uh, for nobody. We, we make sure that the customer's tests and preferences are met uh, and we put science into food processing to make sure that we have uh, a product that is very nutritious for families uh, and, for, and that can help people to improve their welfare in terms of income. The, we also had an opportunity of unlimited supply of raw materials and that was fish. Uh, when we started, there was not so much competition in regards to who buys farmers fishery, fisheries, fishes, sorry. Uh, we were the only ones that had interest. I worked with farmers previously and I knew how much they, they really suffered to get market. So um, I was passionate on making sure that farmers were getting a good price uh, and also making sure that I was also uh, having these young people uh, getting jobs uh, and we also, uh, so we never really had a problem. So this we looked at it as an opportunity for us to be able to, to, to go into this business. Uh, and also uh, having this opportunity for Uganda, having an incubation program that if fits uh, within our, 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 our goal, uh, this was also one of the reasons. And so this is a partnership that we treasure and we, we really appreciate. Thank, next, please. Uh, uh, also, enhancement and sustainability, uh, we have uh, done this, we explore, we create and deliver quality fish products to satisfy the needs of the target markets. As I have already mentioned, we make sure that what we produce is, is what the people want and it is safe. We, we also do the safety measures uh, and also we, prom we do promote sustainable fish fisheries. In, in, the, in the country, because we know without being sustainable, the resource is not going to be there uh, for in the long run. So we add value to avoid uh, waste, to uh, uh, we make sure that we have a good waste management system. Uh, and we also work so hard to improve the deterioration of the fisheries sector by having various products made out of fish. Uh, so that there is no fish going to the dustbin because there is no uh, refrigerator or because there is no uh, technology. So we take all kinds of technology, we try them, we test them, uh, even we, we do drying. So all that is part of the inheritance competition. Uh, we also look through uh, in, this, in, this, in the future that if this has worked for fisheries, it can work for any other uh, food commodities. So we hope that these mangoes I saw from Nigeria a while ago will be put to proper use with the new technologies that uh, people really have come up with. Next, please. Uh, we do know that uh, the future of fisheries is with the youth. Uh, and we so we really work so much with many of them, as you can see there in our processing plants, we have many young people uh, who come every day to give uh, services to the people. Uh, the, 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 the boys who are doing fish harvesting, the, the women who are doing drying and uh, uh, all that. The first picture here was for, uh, I went to Mwanza and I saw that photo where the man was standing in a, in a fish bag and I put it alongside mine for people to compare and see if really the three, the three photos that I have and the, the first one that has uh, women drying on the sand, standing in the food, we need to do something. And it is very simple. It is just putting ourselves to order and deciding to do it. Uh, and uh, the beautiful shop last one is, is one of our shops. We have managed to have uh, five shops in, in Uganda, which are distributing fish. Uh, and here we, we did this because we, we got challenges with uh, supplying supermarkets because there were delays in payments and uh, uh, there would not be balance in finance because we supply on credit and buy fish on, on cash basis. 
So we decided to have our own uh, retail outlets to improve on efficiency and we can see it working. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, so more explore trade market development options local, regional, and international. We don't uh, undermine any market. We go to the grassroots, to the last customer who is uh, uh, with the very limited resources. Uh, we also go for the middle and for the, the big fish who have much money, who can, the importers, those who can buy and resell, uh, or maybe those who can supply in their, in their restaurants in the UAE and other countries. Uh, you can see our products are very clean, they are safe, they are well, they, we do well packaged, branded properly, uh, and uh, they are safe for consumption. We have a variety of products. We have seven, uh, I think 17 products now today in Cati Farms. Next, please. Uh, there's no success story without challenges. Uh, and we too have had a, a rough time making sure that we sustain this company. Uh, so as you well know, uh, it is very complicated to, to start business in Africa. And, and this is because uh, the cost of production like power uh, are very expensive. Uh, and also there is no uh, ideal packaging material for, for, so everything is imported. And this brings out the, the cost of, uh, of the product to be high. Uh, also like uh, shilling infrastructure, uh, which, I, which I already said, power, electricity. Uh, and this one is very challenging considering the product that we are dealing with being a perishable uh, product. Uh, and now due to COVID-19, uh, there is limited e-commerce tools for us to be able to adopt. Uh, we really did not have much uh, um, online marketing uh, tools uh, built within our companies. So we were trying to adjust since we were hit at a short, on a short notice uh, and we, we didn't have uh, money that we, we did not spare money for, for this. So it was uh, really a, a blow for everybody, uh, but we are lucky we survived it uh, and we are going forward with the what we have managed to do. We have now uh, moved on and much in a much better way uh, with, for using both the previous and the current strategies, uh, both in communication, making sure we have a, a strong communication uh, strategy. So every challenge has, has had a solution. And I'm very happy that we are. So the most of it challenges is that uh, investing in money, uh, for agriculture is very scarce. So everyone will tell you agriculture is a very risky uh, enterprise. And they will say, we don't fund a private company. So you really have to work so hard to be able to balance uh, and be able to meet your clients' needs. So mainly uh, those are the challenges that we have faced. Next, please. Oh, I think it's done. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm looking forward to answering any questions that you may have. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Lovin, for a very nice presentation as well. And you will, if I see the questions from you, for your predecessors, certainly you will have many as well. Uh, your um, uh, presentation makes a very good link now with the next panel of discussions uh, where we have policy, finance, and of course, uh, um, the linkage to the, to, the, to the summit, and not only the summit, but other processes that support sustainability. And uh, uh, Royal Messi is the Chief Investment Officer of IDH, the Sustainable Trade Initiative. His background is on finance. Uh, he played an instrumental role in the development of the Farm Feed Fund, a bl blended uh, finance fund, uh, so from uh, different uh, sources, including, uh, of course, uh, Dutch. Um, but it, all his past experience as well has been very much on the Dutch Development Finance Institution, FMO, uh, uh, overseeing private equity investments and serving in advisory committees of, you know, uh, two uh, multi-billion, billion dollar. So 
uh, you can understand rule that we the challenges that our uh, I hope uh, it was interesting for you to listen to some of them but with the challenges they have, which are not only finance because they have done very much work but finance is still one of them um, uh, we would like to hear a, bi a bit uh, from you your insights on what will be the main uh, you know chances for smallholders value chain actors SMEs to access that finance because finance is there and at the same time they have enormous difficulties in accessing it. So how do they risk the smallholder financing? And you know, do you have some clues, some best practices for entrepreneurs uh, throughout your experience that you can share with us? Um, you know, and any other, of course. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Isolina. It's a pleasure to uh, to be here. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I represent uh, IDH and the, the Farm Fit Fund. The Farm Fit Fund is a, a fund that focuses on improving farmer livelihoods. Um, it's a 100 million fund and a 250 million guarantee facility with uh, the Dutch government as a stakeholder and a number of uh, large companies such as uh, Unilever, JDE, Mondelez, and also two large financial institutions like Rabobank and uh, the Dutch Development Bank. Uh, FMO. Um, yeah, so, so your question is, uh, we are now underway about one half year, we're doing our first uh, investment and we've seen a lot of uh, opportunities in, uh, in the market and it's not uh, an, an, an easy market. Um, I think today um, the topic is, is innovation and um, the funny thing is if you talk about innovation, you think about highly technological uh, companies, EgTech, FinTech, etc. But I was really impressed by the innovations that were um, uh, presented here today, like uh, uh, cold hubs and the cassava leaves and also the, 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 the fish processing. Because I, I do think that these are uh, yeah, really very effective solutions. And um, yeah, for, from two of those presentations, I indeed heard that uh, also access to finance is, uh, uh, is, is an issue. Um, we also see that financial institutions, both local as international, really are very uh, risk averse. They don't want to finance anything that is linked to, uh, to smallholder farmers. And we have uh, instruments to help them com coming over the hurdle. We always, uh, we take the highest risk, um, but always have to take along, for instance, a, a local bank. Um, if, if you ask the question, Isolina, what is um, what, what what are the tips and tricks? I think you know it's always to have uh, a solid business plan and uh, yeah, a, a concept that is very much linked to the market. I think what we see, we are very much focused on on value chains whereby smallholder farmers are supported, whereby credit is only one part. You know, that's, it's, of course it's important, but it's not, not the only thing. So farmers need to have access to, um, to, to a couple of, of services in order to become uh, or to, to improve their lives. So that is um, obviously agronomic support. It is um, credit can also be uh, access to inputs, of course, but also a clear uh, linkage to uh, to the market, which I would say for for banks is the most, um, and also for funds like us is the most uh, important thing. Um, I think scale is a, is another thing, and it, that's also something we are uh, dealing with. We see a lot of interesting uh, opportunities, um, but often scale is lacking. Um, and we can work together with banks or with other funds in order to um, go smaller. Um, but you know, so certainly when you're an international fund, in our case, we're operating from the Netherlands with an office in, in Nairobi as well, and also one in, in Asia. Um, we don't look at the, at, at the very small, um, yeah, at, at, at the very small transactions, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I, I, th I think that would, would be my introduction. It, it is like market linkage is important, very um, different elements that create an ecosystem 
that works for the farmer, but also the companies that source from from smallholder farmers. I think that's the most important uh, uh, important thing. And obviously, there are always things like uh, yeah, you have to have a, a decent capitalization. You have to yeah, you know, your um, your your results have to be stable in an upward trend. Like funds like ours, and we're not the only one can step in and at the fairly early stage and we're not saying okay you need so much collateral or you know you need to be profitable for three years there are players in the market that can help you over the hurdle but the most thing is is that you have something that makes sense from a business perspective and that is also um, sustainable and preferably also scalable on the longer term and i think here um, there are really a couple of very appealing um, examples uh, because we, we've seen that with, with cold hubs, but also uh, with Shakina and also Lovin, it, it, it starts small, but it, it grows and it shows success. And I think that is a, uh, and it's very much meeting a market demand. And I think those are the most important elements. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Rul. Uh, indeed, that's what we want to show is that um, some businesses are doing well by themselves already and not, you know, donor driven or, so of course you need more to expand like any business. And we certainly want to advocate for more funding to those um, um, being local, regional or international markets. And of course, calling CP and others, but certainly the organization I work for also supports the process of some of the companies, you know, in uh, being uh, more prepared to access those funds because it's very, very often my co colleagues working on this is very hard work yeah? uh, to meet the conditions <laughs> to, uh, to access funds, as you, you know. Uh, so this needs also some capacity that has to be, you know, deployed. For so, sure. Can I uh, answer one question? Because I got a very um, important question. How can you uh, reach smallholder farmers if you're not working on small transactions? Uh, we work through uh, value chain actors can be large traders, but it can also be um, local processors or exporters and can also be financial institutions. So we provide high risk capital and that means that they will um, can co-invest with us, but with a lower risk. So it always goes through a company that can be local or original. And those companies, we call them implementers, have the reach to, to smallholder farmers. They mostly source from smallholder farmers or provide services to smallholder farmers. Yes, absolutely. Yes, indeed. So we can continue and come back. You will have certainly uh, many questions as well. Uh, to Esterine, uh, Esterine Potabon, who is the Director of Program Innovation and Planning at Debad Agency. Uh, she has, of course, we is a support organization for the African Union. Um, so it, I, I know Esterine for a very long time. I'm very happy to see you always. And um, uh, of course, uh, you are very, very committed, not only your organization, but yourself, uh, towards entrepreneurship. You have been doing a very, very uh, committed and hard work, uh, especially in support of women as well, women entrepreneurs. Uh, you are one of the top women, uh, not only by me, but in general rewarded in agriculture policy in the continent. And uh, your past experience has been also in uh, UN institutions, academic research, policy, uh, and working in areas which are climate change adaptation, environmental law, development policy, and of course, agriculture. So you have the different parts of the equation to give us also some insights. On, uh, what do you think, seeing those cases and many others, of course, that, that you support as, as a um, NEPAD agency, um, what more we can do to support those entrepreneurs to access more remunerative markets, while of course supporting and promoting, uh, you know, sustainable practices as well. Uh, I would be very glad to hear you, Esterine. Welcome again. Thank you so much, Isolina, and um, thank you for the invitation. And we are really pl pleased to be here, participating in this very interesting um, dialogue series. Um, I just want to. Um, send our greetings also to all the other colleagues who are in the in this panel um, and who are participating in the meeting. Um, the, the 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 previous the first panel I was listening very carefully I think 
are doing really, really um, amazing work, um, concrete work on the ground. Um, but as, as um, the last speaker just mentioned, um, around, um, uh, uh, when we talk about this innovation, one, um, you know, firstly think of technological innovation. And um, I think we, we need to also remind ourselves that we we need policy innovation um, and the work that we do um, of course as um, AUD and NEPAD in the African Union um, is to create that policy environment at the continental level that encourages you know national domestication and innovative um, policies and programs um, at the national level so I will just of course recall um, that we have the Kadab, Kadab Malabo vision um, 2025 um, um, to reach smallholder farmers, 25 million um, smallholder farmers by 2025. Um, they have the target on intra Africa trade and of course the target to, to achieve the um, zero hunger. I'm just listing a few. Um, I will also recall as I will know that we now have the African continental free trade area that has come into force. And interestingly, in the in the preamble of, of, of the continental free trade area, it recalls the aspiration of agenda 2063 for a continental free trade market with free movements of you know uh, 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 of persons, capital and goods and recognize that um, these are crucial for promoting agricultural development and food security. So I guess the point I'm making is the, the acknowledgement that for economic and social transformation uh, for the continent, we need um, to do this um, through agricultural development and the critical role that smallholder farmers and small businesses will play in, in this process. So, um, why then policies, you know, um, it, it is really important that we, we help to design fit for purpose instruments in the context of emerging trends, challenges and opportunities. So I'm, I'm, I was really happy to hear some of the, the presentations this morning where a need was recognized, was, was identified, and then instruments were developed and designed to address those needs. So the, the case of Rwanda, the case of the example from Nigeria, these really were all uh, practical responses to uh, needs that uh, were, were recognized on the ground. And the, the, it's also important to point out that the, the, the policy environment um, have to encourage and not stifle innovations, um, which of course are, are key to, to mobilizing uh, um, um, resources, but also bringing the kind of transformation um, that we we require um, for for our job creation and growth in in our economies. So, just very quickly, in, in some of the work that has been done by EU member states as they go about implementing Malabo and and Agenda 2063, I think one is very pleased to see that um, a lot is happening right now in the areas of you know, designing flexible policies in digital financial services. Um, you know, this, this facilitates access to financial um, services um, in, in many, many of our countries um, right now. I think East Africa is doing quite well in terms of um, mobile money policies um, uh, 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 in, in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and, 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 and all the countries there. Um, other policy areas to address some of the things that we've just had, like the, the post harvest loss issues, because the, the warehouse um, receipt systems and, and policies uh, are, 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 are areas that will help you know, to eliminate the need for external um, collateral um, using uh, store uh, 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 commodities. And um, this obviously will, if you have them, will reduce the pressures on farmers to sell um, their produce at, at very low prices. And in the programs that we've had, this is something that we've had a lot, a lot from smallholder um, women, women farmers, uh, where they just need to uh, um, throw their, 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 their produce um, because they don't have storage. 
um, the I think the the coal coal hub um, came into being because of of this, this this kind of issues that they identified on the ground, and we've had you know it, the, the the policies again that government has to be promoting and government intervention in terms of you know uh, um, risk sharing uh, mechanisms. Um, how do you engage in in, in such um, uh, supporting the risking? Uh, um, um, funding for smallholder farmers, we are seeing some 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 uh, movement in this area. In some countries, I think, for instance, like in Nigeria, the the the, the central bank um, has has devised um, a, a scheme to to support this. And and of course, another big area where we really do need policies that are supportive for smallholder farmers are those relating to to weather index um, insurances. Um, we know about of climate change and the the impact that it has on on agriculture in the continent, um, but we also know that um, for smallholder farmers to get insured or take insurance is is also uh, an issue that that is challenging for them. Um, we the, the the cost and benefit of 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 of, of these schemes. Um, but again, some progress are being made through some of the programs like ACT that the continent has sent. Um, Malawi, Ethiopia, Kenya, I think, um, are some of the countries that are making some good advances here. So in recognizing some of the policy areas that government needs to move, AUD and NEPAD has put in place some programs um, to promote the, the, um, this, this, this measures in the countries, but also to build and support capacity for smallholder farmers and particularly youth and women um, farmers. So we have, for instance, the 100,000 SMEs to create 1 million jobs. And the, the, the purpose really for this is to contribute towards building the capacity of young entrepreneurs um, and other um, actors to other sustainable financing mechanisms to them, you know, including establishment of regional guarantee funds. Um, we have now footprints in Nigeria, Kenya, Togo, Ghana, Rwanda, Cote d'Ivoire, and so on. And the concrete results have really been established this SMS Academy. We have currently trained about um, 22,000 youth entrepreneurs. And um, we are in partnership with EcoBank. Um, this partnership will start in around the June 2021, where um, um, finance EcoBank will provide some guarantee of financing for, for youth. Um, we also have run for a number of years now with, uh, a program we call Agriculture and Food Insecurity Risk Management Program, AFEM. And um, they, this program um, looks at ensuring specific investment in physical infrastructure and, and building institutional um, capacity. Um, so we have um, supported um, like the building of warehouses um, in, in some of the countries that have identified this as a critical area for investment that they, they want. Um, we support through the program also weather risk management, so information relating to, to weather patterns um, uh, for farmers. And um, we also have the Grow Africa program, which I think some of you will know. And I think IDH um, is a strong partner with, with NEPAD, with AUD and NEPAD on the Grow Africa program, which is really helping to organize um, our commodity value chains, priority commodity value chains in, in member states and to see how to bring private sector resources there into this. So we have also the, the Women Climate um, Gender Program, which I should mention, otherwise I will be remiss, uh, a program that's very close to my heart that really helps in organizing uh, women groups um, to access um, funds, but also very physically to uh, capacity building on the use of, of appropriate technologies um, for processing, well, for farming, for processing and marketing. So, um, these are really some of the, the things that we're doing and the, the, the policy environments really from these different programs, um, a number of things come out. We need to really promote um, policies that um, promote small scale processing centers um, to be established um, closer to productive areas. Um, policies that create more neighboring environment for smallholder producers to be more competitive 
um, and also look at mechanisms that can and support funding um, for, for, for rural um, agro processors uh, um, at, 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 to, to invest in you know, processing facilities, machineries, transportation, and, and other storage facilities. These, these are real needs on the ground that have been, we have identified through our programs. Um, and um, I think in the new trading environment that we are getting into the continent um, of the continental free trade area, um, where there's an opportunity for smallholder farmers to participate in, but for that to happen, I think we all have um, some work to do um, to bring awareness of the opportunities that are there, but also to build capacity um, um, so that the, the conditions and standards that are laid down in the protocols on trading goods, trading services, um, our small our farmers and small businesses um, are aware of that those conditions and prepare their businesses um, to, to meet those conditions so that they can take advantage of the trading, new trading system. There are other instruments um, more dealing with, with financing, like the adjustment facility, the Pan-African Payment and Settlement Fund. These are all being thought of now. And I think it's important that, you know, the views of farmers um, are sought um, so that they can be in, inputted into these policy discussions that are happening now. And that will have an impact on, on smallholder farmers and small uh, businesses in their participation in the continental free trade area. So we really, uh, AUDA will be starting a capacity building program. We will be looking forward to working with colleagues and, and all the partners and the farm organizations so that we can see how we can support um, uh, and prepare um, for participation in this new trading environment. Thank you so much, Ms. Olina. Back to you. Thank, you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Esterina, for bringing the very key part of the ecosystem and the policies needed, of course, for the uh, private sector entrepreneurs and farmers to uh, flourish. And we will be very glad, actually, to uh, continue to collaborate with you and announce, actually, the uh, collaboration. The last session uh, was on uh, um, the Africa Free Trade Agreement, and, and and there, there, there is a, a, a lot of capacity to bring to the farmers and entrepreneurs as well on the opportunities. That's that's a, a, an example, and many of the others you highlighted. So, uh, absolutely, we are a bit taken by time now. So, our last um, actually um, uh, panelist here, and then it will be Ishmael who will do the um, uh, wrapping up. Elizabeth, I hope the connection is good. Elizabeth Zimadala, I don't think she needs much introduction. Uh, she has been with us already before. She's the core, of course, the partner uh, of this activity. She's the president of the Pan-African Farmers Organization and also the president of the Eastern African Farmers Federation. She's herself, at least as I knew her at the beginning, a young Ugandan, young agripreneur uh, and uh, uh, she's today as well member of the advisory committee for the uh, food system summit um, and of course she's also in many of the key areas of work uh, for farmers in the committees of the forest farm facility para on the research side the pan-african agribusiness chamber Africa Comesa, etc she has been also championing one of the areas of uh, the opportunities brought by digitalization for the farmers and that's actually one of the areas also, I think um, the agency of NEPAD will, will work on at the continental level. level. Uh, Elizabeth has uh, championed that through, for example, the e-granary, a, a mobile initiative that aggregates farmers to input services and output markets. And that has you know, expanded uh, um, in, in East Africa uh, uh, countries. And of course, uh, as you know, as well, she has been recognized uh, by the World Farmers Organization and other global uh, initiatives as one of the women contributing to sustainable development. So I hope um, that in Uganda, uh, the uh, connection is fine now. If needed, do not put your camera, uh, but Elizabeth, I hope you are with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Isolina. I hope you can hear me now. Um, I'm really very pleased uh, listening to the success stories that have been just uh, presented, especially coming from the farmers and the small and medium enterprises. And uh, I would like again to appreciate um, 
and all the panelists for the efforts they are putting in, for the energies. And they've really shown a lot of creativity, a lot of resilience and success. And like you've heard from all the speakers, this success happened with the little or no support going out for financial support others you know they had challenges um when covid came in so this is where we really um we are looking forward to creating partnerships with different um organizations to be able to to thrive especially during such um unprecedented times of uh, of covid so from the farmer's perspective we recognize uh, the value of sustainable food systems and we believe that farmers uh, really make um, already a great contribution to sustainability. You've listened to all the cases. You've heard how much they you know, put in to, to develop uh, the different value chains in different enterprises. We are the custodians of the environment. We think about the environment. We develop and promote sustainable practices. We mind about the climate change. And when you look at um, uh, the mostly affected, it is we, the farmers, who are mostly affected, especially when the natural resources are depleted. So farmers are, but again, when you look at the way we organize ourselves, I think uh, we really deserve the credit. We are the mostly organized, right from the local cooperatives to the continental level, at the level of PAFO. I don't think there is any other sector that is well organized like the farmers. And that is, of course, uh, the social capital, which is our invaluable un asset. But we don't get as many benefits in terms of profitability when you compare us to other sectors in the food chain. You realize that no one recognizes our contribution in monetary terms. And I think this is where I feel that there is an urgent need actually needed more than yesterday, that we quantify our contribution to the sustainable practices. We are doing a lot in terms of conserving the environment, in terms of good agricultural practices. But when it comes to the monetary returns, I think um, we've not been um, uh, privileged to take a share. So we've seen, of course, improvements from our farmers groups, uh, like you've seen uh, the, the success stories. Uh, both at local, small, and medium companies across all the value chains. Uh, but we need to hear more and at a bigger scale. And that is where we need the support of organizations like NEPAD to come in, African Union, you know, to, 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 to support um, uh, local and local, small, and medium entrepreneurs. We see opportunities, of course, in the local and regional markets. Uh, due to the rapid population growth, uh, we are seeing urbanization happening everywhere. Uh, of course, people, um, the incomes are increasing. Uh, the consumption patterns are also changing. But again, we need to provide more support to the farmers in terms of access to technologies, uh, innovation, adapted finance, and skills. Uh, when you look at what has just been uh, presented, you realize that um, the technology development is still uh, very low. Uh, when it comes to output, uh, they cannot satisfy the market because their production capacities are very low. So this is where we need to see uh, organizations coming on board to support such innovations with uh, relevant technologies that are affordable, with innovations, with, um, with the finance that is affordable, but also, uh, be able to build the capacities of some of these entrepreneurs with the right skills. So the agriculture and agri-food sectors have to be more profitable. It's not about, you know, uh, growing food for, for consumption. We need it to be more profitable, especially uh, to the young farmers, to the women. The women need to have money. The youth need to see agriculture as a profitable venture. And this is where, again, we need to provide the right full skills to upscale local innovations. We also need to move more into the processing segment and you know, beyond the primary production. Some of our cooperatives and farmers organizations are doing very well. 
Uh, but again, success needs to be expanded. We need to reach big numbers. We need to have a transformative impact. We need to support um, these uh, innovations to reduce food losses and waste, to promote circular economy, and also be able to improve food safety and traceability. Uh, again, we still have uh, significant challenges. It has already been mentioned. Uh, the impacting these challenges are really impacting uh, food security and nutrition of our populations. We need to value more our local food. It should be widely available and it should be consumed. Most of our people nowadays are really um, are, are turning into mining about uh, the feeding habits. This is where now we need to put our concentration, mining about how we produce the food, how it is cooked, how it is served, you know, and how it is preserved. And also we need to focus on uh, other sophisticated products for our markets. You've, you've seen, um, for example, um, the processing of the cassava, cassava leaves, uh, a case of, uh, of Rwanda. We really need to move beyond uh, what we see uh, or what we feel has been the norm, and then be, try as much as possible to be very innovative. So the sustainability of the food systems has to go hand in hand with uh, more respect to those who produce it. Those who produce the food, they're usually unable to consume it, and they don't even get a decent living out of it. And who are these ones? These are the farmers. And you know, we face more complex food systems with a wider range of issues. Of course, ranging from agriculture, from trade, policy, health, environment, and others. So as I conclude, uh, as PAFO, uh, uh, we have a new strategy in place and um, we are focusing on um, uh, a number of pillars, but looking at farming as a business, managing the farmer knowledge, and looking at how farmers can influence decisions and dialogues at different levels, including the UN level. And it is uh, maybe one of the opportunities we've even been given an advisory role and uh, you know championship role in the advisory committee. But we also focus on women and youth. We are putting resilience of farmers at the core. We are focusing on innovation. And this is of course shown by the different uh, series that we are organizing with Korea ACP and again, bringing together the different partnerships. So uh, very soon uh, we are going to be organizing a number of independent dialogues through um, our regional farmers organizations, but again, um, through, uh, through other partners, like tomorrow we have one with NEPAD and um, we shall develop our continental position on behalf of the farmers. This will again feed into the global producer organizations dialogue for a global position. So I invite all of you at an appropriate time uh, to participate in the mentioned dialogues as they will be announced through the Food System Summit Gateway and our communication uh, platforms, again, with our partners and our regional um, uh, farmers organizations. So finally, it's our duty to preserve and protect our future. And this can only be done through sustainable food systems. If we don't have the courtesy to do it for our own, at least let's do it for the future generations. Thank you and over to you, Isolina. Thank you very much, uh, President, for this uh, passionate, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, contribution. And we count really on you. You have summarized very well some of the key points, but we count really on you uh, and Ishmael to bring some of these concerns to the process indeed of the UN food systems and we will participate in the ones you will organize. The farmers have to uh, get more out of the value chain. I don't think anybody will disagree with that here. And now we have to put different efforts for, uh, to, get, to get there. So without major delay now, uh, Fatma, I think you have been uh, putting together, together some key, uh, of course, we don't have the time for all. Some have been already answered bilaterally, I see from the speakers. Uh, uh, some uh, questions that we can still have a round of, uh, of discussions and getting input from the floor. 
Merci, Isolina. En fait, oui, ça a été très, très dynamique, comme d'habitude. J'ai vu et je remercie les panélistes qui ont répondu à certaines questions. Je vais juste les répéter pour consolider un tout petit peu, parce que lorsqu'une question est posée en français et que la réponse est faite en français ou bien vice-versa, malheureusement, les autres participants ne peuvent pas les, les voir ou bien les comprendre. Tout d'abord, je, je remercie tous ceux qui ont et qui ont remercié euh, le, le, la PAFO et le collège ACP pour ces, pour ces sessions. Le, ça, ça, nous, ça nous pousse à doubler d'efforts. Euh, pour really ceux qui, qui ont levé la, la main, malheureusement, euh, le format de ces sessions ne, ne nous permet pas de donner la parole euh, aux participants. C'est pour ça que nous avons dit, nous avons répété, Isolina également pendant sa modération, que pour les questions, il faut absolument, ou bien pour les interventions, pour les remarques, il faut absolument les mettre dans la partie chat ou dans la partie des questions-réponses. Euh, tous ceux qui ont demandé les contacts des participants, nous vous l'avons dit, ça a été écrit également par, euh, par le soutien technique, que toutes les interventions, que, que l'enregistrement même de cette session, sera mis sur les sites web de la PAFO et du collège ACP après la tenue de cette session. Euh, et puis, il y avait des questions très particulières, très personnelles. Euh, merci à Axel, elle a déjà mentionné que nous contacterons certaines personnes ou bien ceux qui ont posé ces questions en bilatéral après la tenue de session. Maintenant, en ce qui concerne euh, les, euh, les questions un peu générales euh, en termes de renforcement de capacité, euh, quels sont les partenariats, quels sont les mécanismes de, de financement dé, dédiés aux entreprises agricoles, euh, nous, nous vous invitons à vraiment euh, regarder sur les sites web qui sont très euh, riche, aussi bien celui de la PAFO en tout ce qui concerne les organisations paysannes ou bien le collège ACP pour tout ce qui concerne les entreprises et les entrepreneurs agricoles. Euh, vous trouverez certainement, sinon vous avez nos contacts, vous pouvez nous contacter pour les questions très directes. Now I'm beginning with uh, Naimeka. Uh, so very quickly, um, some of the questions, how many days you can keep your products What preparatory activities you undertake before storing in cold uh, uh, homes? Uh, how much cost one unit? And here you have uh, answered, and what is the capacity? So the capacity, there is three tons, 10 tons, and 100 tons. And the, the, um, uh, the project presented by Naemeka, it was three tons, and the cost is $27,000. Uh, how can you share this experience with other countries And you answered that it, it is already shared in Kenya, Li Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Um, how many value chains you are working with these uh, hubs? Uh, in how many value chains, which value chains? Uh, the solar energy is it, uh, isn't very expensive at, this, uh, uh, at the installation. And how do you handle this? Uh, how do you approach the international markets with the cold uh, hubs technologies? And are you dealing with uh, professional organizations involved in fresh food industries? Uh, Pierre Damien, online trainings regarding your innovations. Do you do online trainings? Uh, how uh, you can export this innovation in other countries? Uh, do you, uh, have you already done it or not? Uh, do you already access the market? Um, international markets in other uh, African countries. Uh, which energy do you use to dry cassava leaves? So is it a green energy? Um, so your products were found in Belgium. And uh, are you only based in Rwanda or do you have other branches elsewhere? Um, uh, do you find your packaging in Africa? Because it is a very big um, challenge. Also, there is a question to Lovin regarding the packaging. So where do you find them or how do you conceive your packaging? Uh, so this is how do you distribute locally also and what is the percentage of local market in terms of market share? For Gaëtan, alors pour Gaëtan, euh, est-ce que vous auriez des, euh, des semences, des engrais bio à commercialiser ou bien c'est uniquement 
les expériences que vous avez présentées, est-ce qu'il y a d'autres expériences que vous avez pour la commercialisation des semences et des engrais Vous avez déjà répondu en ce qui concerne l'augmentation des espaces d'agriculture biologique. Vous avez répondu que 75% se fait sur l'existant déjà. 25% donc sur des nouveaux espaces. Euh, il y a eu des questions particulières sur la certification, vous avez déjà répondu. Euh, comment la, cho la chocolaterie approche des consommateurs locaux et euh, comment euh, Synabio prévoit la commercialisation des produits bio à Madagascar et les pays de la sous-région So now for Lovin, how do you integrate? Um, um, many congratulations also for you, Lovin. And how do you integrate the new technologies in your processes? Uh, have you get any certification? Do you have enough profit margins in view of the high production costs? And uh, how do you participate to sustain the fish resource in Uganda? Are you supported by the government? From which counties do you have Uh, your packaging, so this is the question of packaging. How did you, uh, did you improve on productivity and increase your uh, financial base? So for uh, Ruel, for um, uh, Esterin, uh, Elizabeth also, it's uh, very huge questions on how to support and what are the application process to support uh, the individuals or the groups or the enterprises uh, Is there, are there funds for certification for, are they loans uh, in which currency uh, they are uh, reimbursed? Uh, do you fund equipment? What are the processes for the youth? Uh, what supports uh, to startup enterprises, especially for innovation? And uh, does the support depend on the country uh, reality and specificity? Over to you, Isolina. Thank you very much, Fatma. So I suggest that the speakers in two minutes, there are things that were already said, like markets, and but just pick up some of the key responses and, uh, and uh, in two minutes, please. So I will start by Naimeka. Uh, thank you very much and uh, for those questions. Let, let me just quickly run it in two minutes. Our cold rooms can extend the shelf life of fresh fruit and vegetables from two days to 21 days. Uh, we are expand, expanding to other African countries, Kenya, Liberia, Sierra Leone, but we are using this platform to reach out to Africans in their own countries who feel there is this problem. Please reach out to us, even if it means for us to collaborate, you know, co-create an application, a proposal together, you know, reach out to us. We have the expertise and uh, the cheapest, we have different sizes of code room, three tons. 10 tons and 100 tons. The cheapest cold room, uh, which are the three tons, goes for 27,000 US dollar. But then that price is not cast in stone. Everything is negotiable. <laughs> and uh, we work mainly with fresh fruit and vegetables. You know, we uh, we work with uh, green beans, carrots, all leafy greens, uh, ball pepper, tomatoes, apples, grapes, kiwi fruits. You know, uh, mangoes, pineapple, purple, and so on. We also have cold room for fish and meat at sub-zero temperatures. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre Damien. You are muted, you are muted. And while you are unmute, uh, the discussions will have, uh, you know, one minute and a half just to say key things okay. on, on, on how to support. Okay. So uh, about uh, replication of uh, our technology in uh, other countries, Africa have not yet uh, done it. Uh, we have only transferred our te technology to another cooperative, which is uh, drying uh, pineapples and export to France. Uh, about exportation, we have a big market uh, uh, internationally. And uh, about energy, Uh, we use uh, for drying, we are just combining electricity and uh, firewood. Uh, for firewood, it is what we are looking for to be replaced by biogas in future. Uh, about packaging, yeah, it's a challenge for us, but uh, we manage to source our raw material from uh, Kenya. Uh, the, how we distribute in uh, Locally, locally, uh, 
uh, 30 percent of uh, uh, our products are distributed uh, locally and 70 percent is uh, exported. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Gaëtan, s'il vous plaît. Par rapport aux questions sur les yeah, semences. So regarding the question uh, concerning seeds, yeah, a very good, uh, very good question. And so concerning um, fertilizers, so well, we export guano uh, fertilizers, 12,000 tons worldwide. And in terms of seeds, uh, well, that's probably one of the main challenges. Um, in Madagascar. So thank you very much for this question. This is really our challenge uh, today. All right, well, thank you very much. Lomin? 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 You're muted. I don't know if you hear me, Lomin. Yes, I hear yes. you. Now. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, mainly regarding government support, yes, so we have worked so well with the government. Uh, I start, we started this business from a government incubation center, so uh, to us it was a very huge support, and uh, we continually uh, still work together on, on issues to do with the policies and uh, uh, how to improve uh, marketing systems in fisheries and yeah so i really am grateful for what the government is offering and also the financing aspect uh, we started with our own finances uh, uh, but later the huge challenges of, uh, of money we had to sell shares to to an investor so we really uh, did that was the best option that we had, considering that we did not have much capital and we needed to scale up the enterprise. Uh, mainly we've been uh, supporting the business growth from the profits of the business and also from the investment funds that we received. Uh, we've worked with banks, uh, we, one bank that we work with, so we, can, we get loans from the bank and we pay back on time. Uh, regarding packages, uh, we have uh, in fisheries, we do have uh, local packaging materials, uh, uh, especially for exporting fillets and uh, the others we source from within Africa, South Africa and uh, Tanzania. Yeah, I hope that is all. Thank you very much. There was a question regarding certification. Yes, we started on the certification process. Uh, the Uganda National Bureau of Standards has helped us to certify our fish processing plant uh, and the process was completed. Uh, we are now certified by UNDS. Thank you. Very much. We will uh, provide more details as well uh, on business profiles that we are preparing with uh, businesses to be, uh, to be shared widely more uh, details uh, about that. So in one minute and a half, please uh, rule Esterin. Uh, from what I said, of course, uh, there is, I hope, many support you can bring, but what, were, what is one or two things that you could immediately kind of, you know, uh, uh, do to uh, support some processes? Uh, Esterine has already given some examples, rule through, through perhaps uh, um, local, uh, local institutions or capacity building. We are talking as well to, uh, to IDEA, ourselves and Cole ACP to try to see uh, some, uh, some support we could bring. Esterine, please. Thank you, Selena. Um, I mean, if you just talked about it. So on capacity building, um, we, we, we have uh, organized these training sessions that we do carry out through um, our different programs. So the Aurora Futures programs have a several training that we, we do um, carry out at regional levels, but also at sub general levels. So, um, indications of countries can, but anybody can participate in that if they show the interest. But also at the country level, through the funding of some of our programs, like the Gender Climate State Program, we have supported uh, women cooperatives, um, giving them resources uh, that have helped them to address issues of um, packaging and processing. And I'm really glad to report that, I mean, the, the state funding we gave to these groups 
they purchase these equipments and now they are self-funding themselves. You know, so this seed funds really help. On the entrepreneurship, we do have a, pro a program that we run. Um, I guess to participate, you have to be in the participating countries for now. And we train young people. We've trained about a thousand or so. About 500 have benefited from seed funds to start their own businesses. This is along the agro processing value chain. Um, and then we starting, we've incorporated a component now that we will train existing businesses. So they will come in for refresher courses on, on management and, and, and so on. So, but I said, these are for in the countries that we, we do have these projects, uh, participating country. Uh, if you are interested, the participants that are interested, they can reach back to us and we can provide more information how they can participate in these countries. We also have a catalog that profiles women businesses. So we organize the um, Women in Agribusiness Forum every year. Of course, last year we didn't do it because of COVID. But the, the, the forum is an, a platform where women come with their process goods, they, 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 they present it in exhibition, and then we undertake training in different things that they want to taught them to do that. So we have seen a marked increase in technology in terms of training and packaging of, of their produce. So We will uh, consolidate the details with you, Esterine, and the others to share uh, with the group uh, when we share the recording of the session as well. Thank you very much indeed. A rule, one or two uh, things? Yes, thank you, Isolina. I think from the front side, um, there were a couple of questions about how the processes are and how uh, companies can apply for uh, financing. Uh, that's very easy. Uh, just send an email. Um, you can also find contact details at the website idhtrade.org. Uh, we're a fund, we're not a big uh, financial institution, so our um, timelines are relatively, uh, relatively short. Um, it can be done either directly or if you're talking to um, a bank or another investor who wants to invest, but it's kind of hesitant to do so and wants to have a, a risk sharing partner, then I think uh, it also could be uh, considered to, uh, uh, to advise this financial institution to, uh, to approach us so we can, uh, we can co-invest. Um, so that's the fund side, but uh, obviously IDH is much broader than just uh, the farm fit fund. We have uh, other uh, activities, capacity building activities. We have a value chain development program. Um, we have uh, a farm fit business support that supports companies that um, engage with, uh, with smallholder farmers uh, in the in development of, of business models. And we have certain uh, commodity programs uh, throughout Africa, for instance, Kassav in Nigeria, we have cocoa program in West Africa, so it's quite uh, quite diverse. So also, please, um, yeah, go to the website or con contact me, and I can direct you to the right person. Thank you, thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, so now um, we will have to conclude. Of course, this is again, as we said, huh, uh, always a beginning uh, of of a conversation. So hopefully, and hopefully with some changes as well and some uh, support from different parts from ourselves as collectively as well as with the partners we can bring um, but um, time is time so uh, we want to give a kind of a snapshot of uh, you know some uh, some uh, uh, successes and not to go too deep in each of them because we, we cannot do that in the time we have um, but now for the way forward I do invite, and I'm very grateful that uh, Ismail Sunga, the CEO of SACAO uh, and a member of the UNFSS Food System Champions Network is joining us. He has been listening very carefully as always uh, to the conversations. He's all, also very passionate about the topic. He has of course a long-standing uh, experience in agriculture and rural development, including policy research and advocacy, as well as development management. He has established Sakao and as the voice of the farmers of Southern Africa, and he's, uh, he's uh, very, very visible always in defending the interest of the farmers with high professionalism and standards of uh, development management. Um, he very passionate about uh, digital solutions, climate change management, development of the new generation of farmers and farmers organizations as well as youth, young in agriculture, uh, systems management, and of course, value chain cooperation. 
is in many, uh, many um, various capacities on structures, continental, international level, and national uh, in, uh, in many parts. I do know, and he's very keen on that, and I can testify that uh, this is very much the case. His ambition, which is very much reality, is to establish SACAO as a farmers' organization development and policy think tank and innovation center to address the uh, systemic, I mean, agriculture development, which matters for the farmers, um, including, you know, the small farmers uh, 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 in cooperatives, etc. cetera. Um, so it is a great work. Uh, it is, of course, a member of uh, FAFO as well. And on the advocacy uh, side, uh, you are a great, great, great champion. So thank you very much, Ishmael, for being with us. And if you can, you know, give us some insights uh, beyond what has been already said. Thank you very much. Uh, th th thanks, Isolina, and greetings to everyone. Uh, I'm not sure about how much time I have uh, because I tend to take, uh, to take long, as you probably know. Um, how much give, time? We can give you five minutes because- uh, Five you, minutes, okay. We we'll start a long time. <laughs> Okay, we'll start counting now. What's an impressive lineup of, um, of um, examples there? I was um, totally um, impressed by what uh, was presented. Uh, quite often you go to some of these uh, presentations and you get the bad side of entrepreneurship. But um, what really came out today was, um, for me, the very, very good side of entrepreneurship. It was entrepreneurship that was um, mixed with a lot of other goodies like um, innovation, innovation beyond technology, innovation in terms of ideas, uh, innovation in terms of uh, implementing ideas, uh, innovation in terms of uh, addressing issues that matter to consumers and that matter to farmers, um, innovation in terms of um, just how to, to, to do things. And to me, it was um, a great illustration of um, that innovation does not only belong to, to technology and other aspects. It belongs to organizing, to ideation, and, and to make things happen. Now, quite often, researchers tend to focus on the nitty gritties, um, which is also important, but maybe the bigger job lies in the, uh, in the other side. But more, more, more fascinating for me was how the, the enterprises were rooted um, in, 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 in the market, but the market not being money. Uh, they did not set out themselves to go and say, we want to go and make money. No, I, don't, I did not get that. I got a sense of people saying, no, there is a problem. Let's find solutions to that. And we are going to have a model that will make us grow maybe uh, in the future. So the motivation was not money. The motivation was addressing the concrete solutions about tomatoes that were rotting um, and uh, addressing issues about um, not being together and forming cooperative uh, because you want to increase your power in negotiation. Um, and it was also consciously, as, as I saw, um, uh, about let's do things in a way that is sustainable not only so socially sustainable by rooting it in women and in, 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 in the youth, but also making sure that there was environmental sustainability uh, in the whole process. As an example, removing waste, um, avoiding loss. Um, and so there was a clear value proposition that was making money, business sense, by addressing environmental concerns. So, so for me, that, that was, that was fascinating to get that insight, that angle. Sadly, that angle is not projected, that there are a lot of small and medium enterprises out there that are consciously and deliberately caring about the environment. Maybe this is one of the messages that we really need to take out. And there are quite, quite a few of them. They are not being profiled enough. We need to make sure that there are efforts to do that. But better still, the question is, how do we grow more of them? Maybe, because I saw, I mean, as I said earlier on, a combination of good things. The environment was there, um, the, 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 the other social things were there. Is that not a very good case for putting together a green fund, which is soft, that could be funding green uh, um, young agripreneurs? It's a good combination, cheaper finance because it's green, 
you're going towards, and it's also focusing on a new generation of farmers. I, I would make a proposition uh, around that. Secondly, um, the, 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 the issue of, um, ironically, what these guys are addressing is maybe as a result of policy failure, maybe as a result of development failure, which is not investing enough in the backbone infrastructure, which results in tomatoes getting rotten because there are no good roads, there is no um, energy. Um, so, the, so, so it is ironically a, an innovation that they put together to address a policy and development failure, which brings me to another point. The issue of um, there is no progress that is going to take place in the context of food systems or, or otherwise, if we don't invest in basic backbone infrastructure, water, schools, dams, clinics, all those things will enable the other innovations in business and agriculture to thrive. Without that, we are, and maybe it's a message that we need to take to the UN Food Systems also Summit. Secondly, another big item is this thing that, um, they, the value chain governance itself in general, and I'm speaking now more generally, is, is uh, the power balance is really not, not right. Um, farmers and primary producers will end up getting uh, the highest risk and the lowest return. At the same time, then you find other people along the chain are getting exactly the opposite, the lowest risk and the highest return. So we need to address that power balance, otherwise, going addressing food system is not going to work because essentially you are maintaining a system that does not deliver the farmers so that's another message yet another message really is is about ecosystems management we all demonstrated through the enterprises that they are actually managing a broader ecosystem that includes the environment and society but and yet there is no sufficient compensation for that uh, how do we and, and and i know elizabeth spoke about uh, the valuation, how, how do we value that? Uh, and, and so that we are also seen to be contributing in very meaningful ways in areas that are not at, at the moment recognized. So we need a better uh, valuation model for the ecosystems uh, management that we play beyond just environmental management, but also the entire society. Building back better, which is one of the major themes that is arising out of COVID, um, is, is also another thing that we really need to to be very careful about as we speak, because better is, 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 can be differentiated. Really, in some ways, if you are in an area such as most of SMEs and farmers, that does not have the basic infrastructure. Building back better means actually build afresh because there's nothing. It means start constructing. It's not building back something that was destroyed, but it's actually putting in place that which should ensure that you have more a life, you live a life that is good, that is more dignified and that is more uh, respectful. Then maybe finally, finally, um, I, I just want to again uh, thank um, PAFO and and Kole CP for organizing this. I mean, this was refreshing to me because it gave me a lot of insights into things that, uh, much as I was said to be experienced, but I never took an angle of. And uh, this opportunity has been great. And I think it has been as, as great to me as it is to all of you. And uh, I wish I had more time, maybe I could have shared some more thoughts, but um, this perhaps is what I can say my two cents worth of um, observations arising from, uh, from this without much ado. Thank you very much, Isolina and uh, Fatima, over to you. Thank you very much, Ismail, because if it's refreshing for you, that's the best compliment, at least <laughs> from my part, I can get, because it doesn't yeah. look like, uh, from a debutant. I have to, before giving just the floor to Fatma and we, we finish, two little things. There were two questions in the chat. One was for me, um, how to collaborate with the um, ACP group, so the Organization of African Caribbean Pacific States, which secretariat is in Brussels and they represent um, new, new governments. Uh, well, actually, uh, as it was said by my colleague at the beginning, we are funded, uh, ACP is one of the organizations uh, which has also uh, funds from the um, uh, uh, European Union and the Organization of African Caribbean Pacific States. So through us already, uh, you know, uh, you are working. 
uh, and many others. We, they also uh, very, very actively uh, participate uh, to our sessions. I cannot tell you now because there were many people, but we have been contacted by various embassies in Brussels, uh, including Madagascar, actually, uh, Gaetan and others. They need very, very great showing businesses from our countries at local level, you know, the, the ones that really matter for the economic and, and the food security and local employment. If you need anything from us, any facilitation, etc., we will be here to help. And you, there is a last question, which is, uh, do you focus only on businesses and what about the civil uh, society organizations? Uh, civil society organization, NGOs and others are key actors in the development as well. These innovation sessions, the core part, as you would have seen, is really businesses, local businesses, and bringing together farmers' organizations and MSMEs, micro, small, and medium enterprises. That is the focus. Of course, we will bring the uh, civil society organizations working in those areas, as we do for research, as we do for finance, as we do for policy. But the core is still showing businesses you know, that work and have an impact in the ground and are local led. Without that, thank you very much. Thank you very much to my colleagues who are working very hard. And uh, please, uh, Fatma, as always, a pleasure to work with uh, the whole team of PAFO and uh, with you in particular. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Isolina. Merci uh, à vous tous. Désolé pour ces dix minutes de retard. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Uh, I'm awfully sorry to be so late. It was so dense, so attractive, so interesting. So, well, thank you, just Thank you very much. We will meet. Uh, for the next session to be held on the 22nd of July, same time. Uh, and we will be discussing food and nutritional safety, contribution of uh, PSMEs. Uh, please uh, save the date as of now. The official announcement, links, programs, everything will be sent to you afterwards. Now, I would like to finish uh, thanking the interpreters. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, congratulate also, as Elon Isolina said, our team uh, backstage. Uh, the teams who've done uh, an excellent work, the technical teams of PAFO, of Colia CP, communications, congratulations for this uh, excellent work uh, for the two uh, communicators from PAFO and Colia CP, and many thanks to all of you, and of course, uh, many thanks to uh, Isolina. Uh, and from Kigali, where PAFO is based, from Brussels, where uh, Colia CP is based, have a lovely day and uh, see you soon. See you in July. Bye-bye.